to me, personally, I think this is the most underrated, most misunderstood verse of the Bible. Not my will, but yours be done. So we're going to take a look at that today. Because I've, I, I looked at this, and in my life, and, and maybe you've done this, maybe you have not, I have taken my will to God, and I said, in the name of Jesus, make this happen. Or I had my own will that I wanted to do, and I would say, God, make this happen. And when it did not happen, I became upset. When it didn't happen, I fell apart. But we got to get to a point that says, you know what? Not my will, but yours be done. And we're going to process that because I want us to all be in that position to say, you know what, God, I can pray all day long, but it's not my will, but yours be done. And I'm going to be quite frankly, sometimes when God's will plays out in my life, I have to say, God, I don't like it. I don't like how it feels. I don't like where I'm going. I don't like what I'm going through. But I trust you. And that's when I can play that song, I trust in God. Because if I truly trust him, it doesn't have to go my way. Amen? If I truly trust him, I can fall flat on my face, but I know that he's still going to help me. He's still going to lift me up. So we're going to look at where did this verse come from? It came from Jesus, as we know, but we're going to look at it. Because we're going to put it in context for not only how Jesus used it, but we're going to put it in context for how I can use it, how you can use it, how we can all use it. Because I really feel if we understand this verse, a lot within our life changes. So let's go to it. In Luke 22, 39 through 41. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs left the upstairs room, and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, pray, that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away, about a stone's throw away, and he knelt down and prayed. So we don't want to go too much into this, but yet Jesus told his disciples, he said, come on. And I, see, I feel like sometimes he tells us, come on, pray, go pray. Go pray so you don't fall into temptation. If you want to avoid and escape temptation, then go pray. Now watch this. Jesus prayed. This is what Jesus said. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. See, this verse has a lot. Okay, so Jesus went to the Father, and he, he said, Father, please... If it's you willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. And sometimes I had to go to God and say, God, if, if you're willing, if it's your will, please remove this obstacle in my life. God, if it's your will, please remove this in my life. God, if it's your will, help me with this in my life. We can say that, but just like Jesus, yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. There comes a point in time when we truly have to say, God, don't let it be my way, but your way. And I'll be willing to go through it. Jesus took that cup of suffering. Are we going to call it to be suffering sometimes? We might have to suffer through some things. We might have to suffer a little bit. We might have to go through some pain. We might have to go through some fire. You look at the, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went through the fire, but Jesus was the fourth man in the fire. We look at Daniel in the lion's den. The God kept his mouth, the lion's mouth shut. Sometimes we're going to be in positions we do not like, but if we trust him, he's going to bless us. Because watch this, this was my favorite part in seeing that. When Jesus prayed that, then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. You see, we get to that point that we can say, not my will be done, but yours. When things fall apart, you ever had something fall apart? I tell you what, my wife and I, we sat down in life and we planned and we planned and we planned. We wanted to go like this. We want this to be like this. We want to do this. We want to go here. And yet God alters those plans Sometimes when God alters the plan, you ever feel like you failed? I have. It didn't work out, and I'm thinking, well, maybe I didn't pray enough. Maybe I didn't do this right, and maybe I didn't do that right. And God says, no, I'm just trying to work my will in your life. I'll be quite honest with you. I, I look at this. Um, 
my plan was to go to Ohio Christian University and be a professor. When I finished school, I was like, cool. I can go be a professor. That was my plan. I was contacting them. I was talking to people when that was my plan. But then someone provided a different plan for me, and they spoke to that person. That person said, why don't you go to Cincinnati? Start a church. And I was like, well, I want to be a professor. I had a choice. I had to go with God's plan, not my plan. But what's it look like to go to a place you don't know anybody? What's it look like to move away from home and not have any friends or have any family nearby? What's it look like to just go into a strange city and start all over? What's it look like to go to a strange city and have to get a job? Not only for me, but my wife. My kids were still in high school. But God had a different plan. And we just had to say, not my will, but yours. Not my will, but yours. And sometimes we get upset. He ever blames somebody else for things falling apart? Sometimes we get upset and we blame people. Well, if it wasn't for them, I would be here. Well, maybe God had a different plan. And sometimes we, we spend more time being upset with everybody else instead of understanding, well, maybe this was God's plan. Here's what we have to understand. Do we trust God? Because if I trust God, then there is nobody out there that can destroy his plan in my life. Think about that. If I fully trust God and he's put me on a path and he says no one on this path can hurt you, then why in the world would I spend so much time blaming somebody else? How many times do we blame organizations? Sometimes we're blaming government. Sometimes we just sit in front of that TV or we get on the Internet and we just blame the government, blame the government, and blame the government. And sometimes I'm thinking God's saying, don't you trust me? I'm the one that runs your life. I'm the one who's controlling you. So don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about all the sin, all the failures. Don't worry about any of that because we can spend so much time pinpointing that and, and calling their sin out and calling their evil actions out that we forget to trust in God. Somewhere in the Bible, it does say you live in a perverse and crooked generation. I'm going to bless you. See, that's why I'm so passionate about this. We're all going to encounter evil people. Evil people on our jobs. You might have a neighbor. You might have a family member. You might have a friend. Sometimes your parents can be the ones that's against you. But you just have to get to the point that says, I trust God. And God, this is your will to be done, not mine. So how can we see his will? How can we follow that? How can we follow his will, be on his path? Well, simple verse taken from Proverbs 16, 9. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. I want you to make plans. I might even ask you, what's your plan for next year? What's your plan for five years? What's your plan? I want you to make a plan. I made plans. My wife and I made plans. We're always making plans. But at the end of the day, God's one orders your steps. So if you make plans and said, this is my plan. See, here's what we do is we say, this is my plan. And we pray in the name of Jesus, make this plan work. And as soon as it does not work, we feel like we failed. We feel like God's not listening. We feel like things didn't work out. But God's doing something bigger and better than what we could think. So we have to understand, I want you to make plans. But I want you to know if your plan fails, maybe that's not what God wants you to do. You see, we have to keep in mind this verse. This verse, this verse should be the one that you put on your refrigerator. It's a verse that you should just reflect on whenever things go bad. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. See, he wants to do more in your life than you could ever ask or that you could ever think. My job is just to get you to read it daily, walk with him daily, 
See, I, I'm not going to be the one to say, hey, I need everybody to do this. Hey, I need everybody to do this. Because if everybody's doing the same thing, I want you to be able to seek God and what it is he has for your life. Because he can do something more, better, and greater than something you could ever think or imagine. But sometimes we, we, we have this limited thinking. It's like, well, I'm going to go see this person, and they're going to help me. And I go see that person, and God's saying, that's not my plan for your life. And all of a sudden, that falls apart. Now, I'm mad. And when I get mad, I'm blaming them. And when I get mad, I'm pointing the finger. Well, they messed me up, and if it wasn't for them, I'd be here. And we just blame, and we blame, and we blame. I am so tired of blaming other people. I don't even want to think about what other people are doing. I want to say, you know what, God? You have something more for me than I could even think or imagine. So I just want to walk with you. I just want to trust in God. I just want to trust in God. But see, what happens is, is we get a hold of our plan. Have you ever gotten a hold of a plan so hard that you weren't willing to let go of it? I've known people that says, well, I want this kind of house. If I get this house, God, I'll, I'll have Bible studies in your house. We, we, it's almost like we try to manipulate God. God, if I get this job, I'll be able to tithe you so much money. God, if you give me this, I'll be able to give you that. God, you give me this car, I'll go pick people up for church and take them to church. I mean, we try to manipulate God. And we, we try to hold on to our plans so tight that we can lose everything else God wants to do. I sometimes pray, sometimes, I do a lot in my prayer. I say, God, I know you have a plan, and I know you're doing, you're doing what's best. But if you want to know how I would do it, I would do it this way. But I trust you. Because you know what? Sometimes I'm going to meet somebody. They just blow up my plan. I can go someplace, and my plan just falls apart. Sometimes I got to think, well, maybe that wasn't God's plan for my life. They didn't blow it up. They didn't make it fall apart. It wasn't their fault. Maybe God wanted me to go someplace else. Maybe God wanted me to see something else. I, I shared this with my wife this week, and I think I've said it multiple times throughout the week. Sometimes it's not where you start. It's how you finish. Because sometimes I can start off on a journey. And when I start off on that journey, it's like I have every obstacle in the way. And I don't know how to see past those obstacles. I have every hurdle facing me. And I'm just getting so upset, and I start blaming everybody else. And God's like, what are you doing? Do you trust me? If I trust him, he says, well, you started off this way, but I have a different plan. I have a different way. I want to do something different. Stop thinking about what you want. Matter of fact, why do you think in Matthew 10, 39, he tells us, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. See, honestly, I think sometimes it's easy to, this is what I want to do in my life. This is what I want to accomplish. This is my goals. These are what I want to do. And, and we hold on to that so tight. God might say, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. I want you to stop thinking like that. And we're like, no, I'm going to hold on to this. And we can hold on to it so tight that we start praying, God, make this happen. God, allow this to happen. And we hold on to our own ideas. We hold on to our own thoughts. We hold on to what we want and how we want it. And next, you know, we can lose everything else. But he says, if you give it all up for him. I want you to have a dream. I want you to have a plan. I want you to make plans. But as soon as it falls apart, don't just give up on it. Seek God in it. God, was this your plan? If it wasn't, open the door because I know you have something bigger and better. You see what that does? That causes you to have joy. I want a church full of people that have no stress, no worry, because I want you to trust in God. I want you to say, well, here was my plan, but it didn't work, so maybe God has a different plan. And then we start really focusing on him. That's why I push the Bible plans so much. The more that you're in the word, the more you're being filled, the more the spirit is talking to you, the more you're getting it, 
the more you're seeing him and not your plan. Let's be honest. How many times have you or you known somebody that says, man, when I was reading my Bible every day, when I was going to church every day, things was going well. But we get out of it. And next thing we got more stress in our life, more hardships in our life. We're a little bit more confused of what's the truth, where to go, how to do things. And I can see God up there saying, then why would you give up on me? I had a plan. I had you on the plan, and things was going well, but you gave up. Because when things are going well, we feel like we're in control. We feel like we have established a good plan. As soon as you give it up, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. So how do we really focus in on God's plan? This verse here, it's a verse that many people know, many people read, many people recite. But it's got four major implications in it, and we're going to read it, and then we're going to dissect it. Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for your life, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Let's break that down. There's four parts in it. Number one, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. The world is going to create rules, legislation, and they're going to say, this is accepted. This is what you do. We have to say, I don't want to copy the world. I want to copy the Bible. I don't want to just embrace what the world is doing. I don't want to embrace what my neighbors are doing. I don't want to keep up with the Joneses. I don't want to keep up with everybody else. I don't want to copy the behavior. I want to be that fish swimming upstream. I want to do it differently. And I want to do it the way God wants me to do it. Now, I think sometimes this was a little bit easier for me because I was always said that I was the person that marched to the beat of my own drum. I always was the opposite person. Sometimes I did it because I didn't like people and I was contentious. And sometimes I did it just because. So I don't like to copy the customs of the world. Sometimes people, everybody will get on board and I will go the other way just because. I don't have to copy the customs of the world. God doesn't want me to copy the customs of the world, but he wants me to follow his rules. He wants me to follow his word and his thoughts. So there's number one. Don't copy the customs and behavior of the world. But number two, let God transform you into a new person. He wants to transform you into a new person. He doesn't want to take the, the old person and clean it up. How many people know what the transformers are? One minute it looks like a truck, and the next minute it looks like a robot, a person. Transform. One minute we look like this, the next minute we look like this. He doesn't want to just clean us up. He wants us to transform. Transformation means letting go of what you was and embracing a new you, losing your life to find life. Because if he's trying to transform you, but you're holding on to your own thoughts and you're holding on to the, your own ways of doing it, you're going to miss what he's doing. And so many times I think we can get so stubborn. Is there any stubborn people in the house? Sometimes we can be so stubborn, we don't want to let it go. Well, this is what I was always told. This is the way it was always done. Well, sometimes the old way was the wrong way. Sometimes there's a new way. Sometimes you have to reestablish new things. So we have to let God transform us. How does he transform us? Well, the, number three, changing the way you think. We have to change the way we think. Sometimes we, we, we think, <laughs> ironic, sometimes we think that we're thinking the right way and everybody else is thinking the wrong way. Sometimes we think that what we're doing and how we're viewing it and our perspective is the right perspective. In reality, the way you think is not always the best perspective. And that's why God puts people in our life to say, hey, maybe you should think a different perspective. And you could be that person that they, someone doesn't agree with you, you become upset. Well, maybe there's just a different perspective to be looked at. God wants to change the way you think. How's he going to change the way I think? Well, by giving me a different way to think. I can either be mad or accept the new way of thinking. 
God doesn't bring people in our life to show us a different way to upset us, but we allow it to. But sometimes he brings people in our life to challenge us on the way we think so he can change the way we think. You see, this is not changing your actions. It's changing the way that you think. Because if your thinking can be changed, your actions can be changed. I was going to write a book. Title, I'm right, you're wrong. Because I felt like everything that I thought was the right way. <laughs> but God says, no, it don't work like that. We have to understand that sometimes there's an other way of thinking about it. It's not just always our way. And if somebody offers you a different way of thinking about it, maybe God has brought them your way to change the way you think. But here's what happens, honestly. Someone comes along, they change the way you're thinking. It chooses you to go outside the realm of what you planned. You see that? We made our plan, and we thought our plan this way, but God says, no, I want to change your thinking, and when I change your thinking, I want to usher in a new plan. Well, we don't like that new plan, so what do we do? We blame, and we accuse, and we fuss about everybody else. But if we would allow God to change the way we think, he might transform us. And as he transforms us, he might usher us into a new and a different plan. You see, because when all that happens, the fourth part is, then you will learn to know God's will for your life. That's when you learn to know his will. When you change your thinking, when you're transformed, when you let go of what you wanted, and you start to gravitate towards what he wants, you stop blaming other people, you stop being upset with other people, and you start to think, well, maybe God has a different plan. See, there's a thought. In my life, maybe I just need to say, well, maybe God has a different plan. Maybe this fell apart because he has a different plan. What this does, it shows me that God has a different plan. It prevents me from being upset all the time. It prevents me from blaming other people. This is, well, they messed my plan up. Yeah, God messed your plan up because he had a different plan. He just used them to stop that plan because it was the wrong plan. Why you think the book of James says when you go through troubles, you give it an opportunity for great joy. God uses other people to break down your plan so he can usher in a new plan. So the reality of it is I trust in God. I trust in God. That's all it's about. I'm so passionate about this. Can I truly believe if you trust God and you put him first, when things fall apart, you won't be upset? You won't blame another person? You won't. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And sometimes when you start out, there's people there that just seem like they're dragging you down. But you say, God, I trust you. I know you have a better plan. And you trust him. And you're willing to change gears. Some of us are not, not a, have the ability to change gears into a different plan. We become so stubborn, like, no, it's got to be this way. It's got to be this way. It's got to be this way. And we miss everything else God's trying to do. I make a plan. I have plans for the future. I have plans for what I'm going to do in the church. And sometimes people say, well, maybe I ought to think this way. And at first I'm like, oh, no, I got a plan. But then later on God says, no, maybe you should change it. Don't get mad if someone says something different according to your plan. But trust God. Trust God. Trust God be in his word. That's why I send those, those Bible plans out. Matter of fact, watch this. In Psalms 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Your word is a lamp to guide my feet. If you want to know what path to walk, open God's word. His word is a lamp to your feet. It's a guide for your path. But guess what? If I don't read the word, I've turned the light off. And when I turn the light off, I don't know which path I'm taking. Well, maybe it's this one. Well, maybe it's this one. Well, my path says this, so I'm going to pray that I take this path and it works out. You see, we do that all the time. 
I can go God's path or I can go my own path. Well, God's path seems a little bit difficult, so I'm going to choose my own path. And when I choose my own path, I'm just going to pray and pray and pray that God blesses this path. And God says, but if you would get my word out, let it be a light into your feet. Let it be a guide into your path. You will go in the right direction. And that's all it's about is being in God's word, going on the right direction, being on the right path, just trusting in God. If you guys really grasp this and you really put in your head, I trust in God, and you're reading his word, this week you're going to have hardships. It's the enemy's plan. Things are going to fall apart. It's the enemy's plan. People's going to do things you don't like. It's the enemy's plan. But you just have to trust in God and say, well, maybe my perception is wrong. Maybe I need to change my thinking. And then you trust in God. And I guarantee you, if you do that, it works out. Remember, it's not how you start it. It's how you finished. It works out. So, because I look at all this, and we're trying to figure out his will, not our will. So what is his will? Well, we know we got to change the way we think. We have to transform ourselves. But in the end, when it's all said and done, his will is found in John 6, 40. Matter of fact, he says it, for it is my Father's will, it is God's will, that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life and raise them up on the last day. It's God's will that everybody be saved. That's what it's about. It's God's will that you see the Son of God, you see Jesus, you embrace Jesus, and you trust Jesus. Jesus, and you walk with Jesus. I want to just raise up a bunch of warriors that's just going to go out there into the world and just take it head on, and your plans, you're going to get knocked down. Your plans are going to change. You're going to think you're going to change the way you think. All these things are going to happen. You're still going to be happy. The next time you find yourself blaming somebody, stop and ask yourself, do I trust God? And God will say, if you trust me, then why are you blaming them? Maybe I have a different plan. Maybe I'm trying to change the way you think. Heaven forbid God change the way we think because we, we already know what we're doing, don't we? He has a better way. He has a better way. We're going to go to prayer. This prayer has us thinking about seven things. Number one, not my will, but yours be done. Sometimes we have to just really isolate, what is my will? What is it I want to do? Where am I trying to fight God at? Does God want me to do something else? And if, if you're just that stubborn, strong-headed person trying to make something done, you got to say, God, maybe this is not my will. Or maybe it's my will, but I want to do your will. Number two, we saw how we can plan. But God orders our steps. If your plans fall apart, maybe God ordered your steps to go somewhere different. Things are going to fall apart. They fall apart just so you can change gears. If they fall apart, don't you fall apart. If they fall apart, you regroup and say, okay, God, where are you guiding? Where are you leading? Maybe something in your life right now is falling apart. It's falling apart because God's trying to take you a different direction. Don't be stubborn and just keep trying to hold on to your plan. Number three, we see that God wants to do more for us than we could think or imagine. I want you to think about that. I want you to take your plan. I want you to take your thoughts and then say, you know what? God wants to do more. He wants to do bigger. He wants to do better than that. Sometimes we think small. He says, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. He wants to do more than you could ever think or ask. All you got to do is just plug into him. Number four, I want you to think about God's word is what changes us. Are you trying to change in life? We all try to change something, don't we? A bad attitude, a bad thought, a habit. But what's changing you? Podcasts, internet, or is it God's word? 
What's changing you? Friends, their opinions, their thoughts, or is it God's word? The more time you spend in God's word, the more he changes you. Remember, number five, God's word, God's word is the light into your path. If you want to know which direction to walk in life, let his word be the light. You ever been in a dark room and you need a flashlight? And our cell phones all have flashlights. And you put that flashlight on, you can see where you're going. That's what God's word does to our life. You ever forced to, like, what job do you want me to take? God, what, what direction do you want me to go? God, who do you want me to surround myself with? We ask so many questions in life. God says, open my word. I'll show you. Number six, we looked at losing life to find it. Sometimes you have to drop your thoughts, your plans, and your life to find new life. Remember, just because you drop a plan doesn't mean you're going backwards. It means God's got something bigger and better that you could ever think or imagine. You have to be willing to let go of your thoughts and your plans and your life in order to God to bless you. And number seven, ultimately, his will is that we accept him for our salvation. That's what it's about. I don't want to say Jesus. I want to receive Jesus. I don't want to talk about Jesus. I want to accept Jesus. I don't want to just speak of Jesus. I want to learn of Jesus. I don't want to get up. Because sometimes here's what we do. We wake up in the morning and say, God, here's my plan for the day. In the name of Jesus, please bless it. He says, wait a minute, I have a plan. Don't you want to know what it is? Sometimes we got to get up and say, God, this is my plan, but it's not my will to be done, it's yours. What do you want me to do? What is your plan for my life? He might say, well, first of all, change the way you think. Change what you're doing. Use the word to open the light to guide your feet. Let go of what you want and seek me more. You see how that all works together? God loves each and every one of us, and he has nothing but good things planned for us. We just got to find his will, not our will. Amen? So we're going to go to prayer. As this song's playing, this altar right here is for you and God. This right here, this section here is just where you can come and talk to God and nobody's going to bother you. If you come and kneel at this side of the altar, I'll come and pray for you. I'll just pray over you. If you want prayer, you come over here, I can pray with you. This is your opportunity to really fulfill what the Spirit's speaking to you. We went through seven things there. I know the Spirit is speaking to somebody. You get to respond. You can sit in your chair and respond. You can come up here and talk to God and respond. Or you can come over here and ask for prayer. This is your time to respond to what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Amen? Well, let us pray. Father God, we come to you once again just thanking you for your word. Lord, ultimately, we truly understand that you love us. And at the end of the day, it's all about accepting you. It's all about trusting you. Lord, we don't want to be people that blame others for things that happen in our life. Lord, maybe those things fall apart because our will is not what's best for us. But maybe it's at a point where we need to change gears and seek your will. Because we know that you've never failed us, and we know that you never will fail us. Lord, let us be that happy person, that joyous person, that, that we know no matter what falls apart, you have our backs, and you're going to provide, you're going to take care of us, and you're going to guide us. Lord, I pray that we would just be strong in you, that we would want and have that desire to read more, to let that lamp of God's word light our path. And Lord, we just pray and ask all these things to be done in Jesus' name. Amen.